What's up, everybody? Welcome back to your favorite New York Jets subscription podcast, Badlands. I'm your host, Joe Caparoso, joined, as always, by Connor Rogers. Fresh off recording, yet another Rewatchables, 1998 Jets-Jags. CR, how you doing? How you feeling? What a beauty. It's when you do those that you... I don't want to say like your fanhood comes back. I don't mean it like that, but like your actual fanhood, like excitement of being a fan, great memories, great times. Uh, that's the furthest back we've gone and we'll go back is 98. And that we were talking about the parallels, like the jets open on the road in San Francisco that year, they lose a heartbreaker in overtime, but both them and the Niners end up winning 12 games. Rosters are just so good. And everything just felt right with that. Jet. Like the roster was good. The staff was unbelievable. They look good. Like the uniforms are good. They got the Met, the, well, not Met Life, the Meadowlands turf going. A lot of fun. Really, really fun to do those. Uh, and, you know, try to build some excitement for the season because we, we've been vocal. Like we think the Jets are, are going to be good this year. And you could see, I'm not going to say the team was built the same way, but it's been a long time coming that they've been building this roster. And it's, it's time now for it to kind of lead to results that means winning. It's, it's fun to win and host playoff games, man. So if you're not a War Room subscriber, go go check that out. we got a couple of rewatchables in the feed. Definitely definitely worth, worth a watch. I'll leave it up on Patreon also as a one-off buy if you're not fully convinced yet, but just come up to War Room. There's going to be a lot of video content flowing through. Also, if you ordered a polo shirt, it is in transit now. The box has been given to Paul. He's shipping them out. Shit. I've worn it. It's comfortable. It's great. There's like We sold 25 of the 50, so there's 25 left, so... Get them before the other half goes. Also, workout shorts going on sale soon. So look out for them. Have them ready for July. We're probably also going to flip another 25 or so of the white hats because we sold all 100. So that means they're popular. So we're going to have to sell more. But look out for polos, hats, workout shorts, all heading soon. One more reminder, you could also still sign up for the golf outing at BadlandsToj.com. Don't wait because we need to give them real final numbers. Like we need people to actually like put their foursomes in to get it going. So- PSAs aside, got a few interesting prompts off the Discord today that I think are all, you know, pretty timely and topical. We're not going to go nostalgia heavy on this uh, pod, except for one great question we got about top quarterback performances. CR, I'm actually really interested for your POV on this. I gave mine on Twitter, but a little half-baked. And it looks like the Rams and the Jets were seriously considering a pretty major trade draft weekend that would have involved the Jets moving down uh, about nine spots, getting a second rounder. Uh, Rams were looking to come up. The Jets ultimately said no, and they stayed put, and they took Fashionu. What did Were you surprised when you saw this? Would you have done the trade? Uh, and what are your thoughts on the Jets not doing it? I was a little surprised when I saw it in the context of, well, <laughs> surprise should be really scaled back a little bit. The Rams are absolutely insane when it comes to offers they make because they truly do not care about volume of draft picks saying draft picks don't matter or like F them picks and all that stuff. Like it's fun and it's cute, but you absolutely need to draft at some point in your lives. The thing is with the Rams, they had a killer killer 2023 draft across the board where they got Puka on day three, but they had a lot of good picks throughout that entire draft yes. where because the Rams, when they hit and they really hit, I mean, when they hit, multiple home runs in one draft, then they could look at another draft and go, well, we just love this player. So we don't care about like our first three picks. If we, it means we can go get him. They were clearly trying to come up for Brock Bowers. I guess I'll explain it like this. I'm a little surprised the jets didn't take the one that was, it was 19 and then their second and third rounder. Right? So technically three picks in the top 100. I, I think that, I guess I'm a little surprised, but it tells you this, and this I agree with this with the Jets, and I haven't really been eye-to-eye -eye with the Jets on the draft a whole lot over the last couple of years, here and there. But it tells you that they thought Olu was an elite prospect, and yes. I completely agree. I had him seventh overall. He's a special tackle prospect because of his size and athleticism and intelligence, and the Jets thought he was in a different tier than what would be available to them on the offensive line later on. And I think that's, I like, I absolutely am with them on that. So you walk out of it, I guess what it comes down to 
if you're the Jets in that situation in hindsight now, right? Because I don't think the Jets have any regrets in hindsight. They got extra picks by just flipping to 11 anyway. They didn't get that war chest of picks, but they get an Olu at 11. So say at 19, we don't know if they would have taken Troy Fatanu medically, but let's say that's what they did. They get Fatanu, who I also loved. Then you go down to 52 or wherever it was, like later in the draft, and you're looking at, like the, the talent does start to shift a lot, where I'd rather just walk out with a blue chip player. It's kind of my long way around it. I am a big believer in acquiring more picks, but this was a draft where there was blue chip talent at the very, very top of it. And the fact that Jets were able to walk out with one of the blue chip players all the way at pick 11 is pretty good fortune, honestly. Yep. Um, so I'm a little surprised they passed on it because I thought Douglas would just be like, hey, I just need picks. I got to keep stockpiling this roster. But I like that they they did pass on it because of what they clearly think of Olu. And I think we'll look down the road because we had this argument, not we like Jets community, but NFL wide people look back at things like, you know, the Julio Jones trade up and stuff like that. And people go, Whoa, like you gave up all this for this. And then more often than not, you look back at the move ups for non quarterbacks. And you're like, damn, I'd rather just have the great player. Yeah. And I think a couple of years from now, we'll look at it and go, man, Olu's like top five left tackle in football, maybe, especially in pass protection. Yeah. Or we could have had, two to three pretty good starters um so it's yeah i mean long story short it's really interesting and it's it's really a big time peak behind the curtain but i like that olu is on the jets and i think the jets are going to feel really good about that for a long time yeah i think considering the circumstances of this year and how likely how douglas has some ptsd of everything that's happened to the offensive line i'm not surprised ultimately he was like look like i had this guy graded as one of the five or six best players in this class i'm going to get him at 11. nothing could happen this year that's going to catch me flat-footed on the offensive line because if i don't protect aaron Rodgers and i don't win this year i'm going to get fired and that happens to be what i think was the right decision anyway because i can already tell you like it's going to be like august of 2026 and we're going to be recording here and we're going to be like Man, thank God the Jets have fashion to it left tackle. Yeah. Like, so we're good there. And like, we got that position checked off. Now we could spend time talking about receiver or inside linebacker or something else. Like, it's a little more staked and sizzle. I think it will pay benefit at some point this year because Smith or Morgan Moses are going to miss time. And I think down the road, whatever happens this year, we'll feel better about it. Because again, like, Douglas has done some good things in the draft, but you know, is he going to hit all those dart throws on day two and day three? Is he going to hit his pick at 19 or verse 11? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't have a problem with how it shook out, especially with the players they may have been taking. And clearly they had some like, I think they probably had some medical concerns about some of the guys they might've been targeting at that range. And I think overall, if we go all the way back to like February on our feed, we were like, all or fashion, it would be like awesome value where they're picking. And like they, those are major needs. And they ended up being slightly less needs because they got Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses and they still got it done. So it was interesting. It's always fun to see this stuff like drop after the draft. And I just have a hard time and we've been wrong, but I have a hard time seeing the Jets regret having fashion on their roster down the road. Now this dovetails into an interesting question that we got from OZS. And this is actually something that PFF has talked about a little bit. And at first read, I think is like, sounds a little nutty, but I think moving into a world we are where there's 17 games and eventually going to be 18 games and 19 games and the schedule never ends. It's not crazy. And the, I'm not going to read it word for word, but the effect of the question is, are we going to start seeing load management in the NFL? And when you look at a team like the Jets, that has Tyron Smith, has Aaron Rodgers, has certain older guys, would you see a team like that be like, you know what? Like, you're going to sit out every four games, depending how we're doing Tyron Smith to make sure that you're healthy down the stretch. Or if the Jets are, I don't know, eight and two or something, and Rodgers has a borderline injury, like, do you sit him out for a week or two when first like pushing him out there? And football is very different than basketball. It's not going to right. play out the same way, but I don't think this would happen now or this year. The Jets are too desperate. They can't give up any games and everyone in that building is on pins and needles about it. But in a world where there's like 18, 19 games 
and teams have maybe multiple bye weeks and there's more players on the roster, someone will do it at some point. Just like it was incomprehensible for it to ever happen in the NBA, it'll happen at some point in the NFL where look at the Chiefs a 20, last year. Yeah. Not yeah. saying they did like it, you pick, but like the yeah. Chiefs just got hot in the playoffs because they have the best quarterback in the world. Yes, and you like you pick, could you pick your spots and be like, yeah, like I'm going to play 15 of the 18 games this year, and because of that, I'm going to be healthy in the playoffs. And again, I don't I don't think the Jets are going to do that this year. Although, again, if if Tyron is like Hey, I'm 60%. Could they be more amendable to be like, you know what? Like, let's get fashion to a start and like be a hundred percent before you come back. So maybe that's how we see it manifest itself. Right. It's a fascinating conversation. And you'll obviously never see a team come out and say, call it like load management or like veteran rest for a guy not playing yes. the game. Because there is way too much money involved in not just the people going to the games, but on the broadcast for the networks and like all, all, all that stuff. Now, I think where the conversation is, say the Jets are going into, you know, a matchup, I don't know, against the Cardinals on November 10th. And the Jets have a pretty good record. And Rodgers on Halloween, Thursday night football against the Texans, had a low grade ankle sprain. One that typically guys get worried. I'm getting worried just hearing it now. <laughs> guys typically like tape up and play through it. But you're the Jets. You're like, why yeah. would, why do we, like, we think we could beat Arizona. Even if we don't, it's not the end of our season. And there's a gap there where they play Arizona on 10 days rest. Why don't we give Rogers like nearly 20 days of rest before playing the Colts at home? instead of traveling out to Arizona. And play. That's where this conversation comes into play, where I think traditionally in the NFL, guys just play through so much. It is absolutely insane. It's it's not like hockey where the season ends and you find out a lot of the injuries because the hockey injury reports are only, only say upper body or lower body and they don't tell you anything else. Like the NFL, they tell you what's going on. Yeah. But I don't think you're aware of how things linger. And that that's where load management can come into play. If the jets think, you know, the tie rod jets can go out there and beat Arizona, or if they don't need the win and Arizona is just the team I'm using as an example, like it could happen in a lot you know, of Arizona is going to beat the jets now, <laughs> <That's Yeah. insane>. which <laughs> they pre jinxed it. Probably, I mean, they're going to be better than people think. I'll say that. I really, I really like Arizona right now, but um, in terms of like, they won't be a dumpster fire. <laughs> that will be funny when we look back at this one. Yeah. I think it's, the Tyron Smith conversation is way more interesting because if Olu is way better than they even think is a rookie and the drop off isn't basically if the Jets didn't have Olu, right? And yeah. it was Carter Warren coming in where the drop off will use like Madden ratings to put it in context. Tyron Smith might be like a 94 overall at left tackle, but he's down if he's down, we're putting in our like 60 overall on Carter Warren. And it could actually like literally ruin the game for us. Wait, if Olu's like an 80 this year as a yeah. rookie. Get him those reps. Ty like I'd rather keep Tyron kind of on ice a little bit. Like let him chill a little bit. Get right. Get healthy for the big moments where, yeah, I I'm very curious. Because the Jets are not in the upper, like the luxury of like the Jets just got to get into the playoffs and everything's great. Because getting to the playoffs has been so hard for the Jets for 13 yeah. years. But it's, it is, I think they will be really delicate with Tyron. Like if, yes. I think I said it already. I think I said I would have Tyron Smith's over under of games played this year, regular season at 13 and a half. Yeah. And I, I think that's about, about right. He's going to miss. Might, I might still go the under because He's the gonna insurance miss policy is pretty games. damn good. And so we're gonna, we're, we know we're going to see fashion at some point, whether it's for Tyron, whether it's for, Morgan Moses, or whether it's he's awesome all preseason and John Simpson has one bad game yeah. and everyone's like, well, can we like play Moses a guard and get Here we go again. out there to get our, I'm telling you it's going to happen at some of point. Of course it's going to happen. Call on it now. It's going to happen because he's going to look great all summer and they're going to be like the first time one of the other guys gets banged up on the interior or has a bad game. I'm just using Simpson as an example because I'm assuming the only thing that would move ABT is if he got hurt is like, how do we get him out there beyond like the three times a half they run a jumbo set and just put Brees Hall behind him? 
So it's going to end up being a conversation. Um, Want to quickly remind you guys, new best ball draft's going to drop this weekend. We're getting very close now to like the real time. deal. Yeah. And, and our pick for football, but like get a couple more reps in before we get some of the bigger money leagues out. We just did a six person, $10 one. This one, maybe we'll jack up to like 20 with eight people. And then we'll do a couple bigger ones once we hit August. So we only have a few off season ones left. So sign up for underdog fantasy using promo code badlands, get a deposit match, basically paying for you, get in there, win some money off us. Underdog fantasy promo code badlands. Check that out for the deposit match. One nostalgia question, and then we're closing with Reddit questions. We got to talk it a little bit, even though both of us got our individual rants and takes yeah. off last week. There are times when we're <laughs> each doing solo pods, like on random days, we yeah. stacked between the 80 other hours of content we have on here. It's, I mean, only the Jets could be this interesting in the middle of June. I think we had like five pods released in like 33 hours on yeah. like, the quietest part of the year. So that's Badlands, baby. That's what we do. All right. I like this question a lot, and I was thinking about it. Uh, this is from Flip0077. What are the Jets' top five performance, top five quarterback performances over the last 10 years? So oh, man. 